This is the Real Footy Podcast. Coming up, the AFL has finally appointed a new CEO. We'll discuss Andrew Dillon's appointment, another Pies comeback, Tiger trouble, and much more right after this. Hello and welcome. My name is Michael Gleeson, and joining me today are Jake Nile and Caroline Wilson on what is a significant day for the AFL in um, the appointment of Andrew Dillon. It was sort of not entirely unexpected in, in the end, but a torturous process to get here. Yeah, well done. To, it's a historic day and an historic re- week for footy, really, with um, a 19th licence probably going to be announced in the coming days. Definitely, I would say, be announced in the coming days. And a new CEO, and they don't come around very often. Well done to the age team who broke the story early on Monday that Gillan McLaughlin would, in fact, stay mm. for that's, another That's, that's the season. story, isn't it? Oh, it's extraordinary. That's, it's that's just, stays to the given he's already year. stayed to this point yep. and then he's staying longer. And, it was um, extra. It was unusual last year when he announced he was going, that he was going to stay for the whole year. Now he's staying for another whole year. But before we move on to the politics of it, I mean, Andrew Dillon is. Um, we all know him. We've all known him for a long time. Great footy pedigree, impressive performer. I think spoke really well at the press conference about his love of the game. Kept talking about community footy. Yeah, that made, was the that was the big tell for me. I was was there as as Glees was. Yep. It was it was notable that he focused on the community footy. That was a bit of a tell. It sort of is who he is too, though. Like he, okay, people know him as the lawyer. Um, Twenty plus years in the AFL, but his his roots in the game are in community footy to the extent that you know it, the old Zavs, right back to Dela. His dad was president of Dela. Um, Played, you know, kick to kick with the O'Callaghan boys there every Saturday afternoon. That is where his his base is. Well, Gillan McLaughlin also played. You know, he, he played um, amateur footy, and he and also, also grew rode up. polo horses. But you know. no, but he also grew up in South Australia. So we've gone, playing as, footy. as a couple of people have said, it's a, it's an easy joke. But we've gone from the big change from the Uni Blues to the old Zabs. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. also we've like, we've taken over twelve months to appoint a the bloke in the of office hands. next door. Yep. Yeah. Like, it's well, a safe well, pair well, of hands. I would love to know. I mean, if an international recruiting company doesn't actually unearth the candidate, then I don't know if they get the million dollars that we've been reported they're going to get. Um, Clearly... Well, they shouldn't. I thought it was really... No, they shouldn't. It was really interesting that Andrew Dillon named three commissioners and they were the three commissioners who we heard, who were seen as the A-team within the commission in terms of decision-making. And they were all there, by the way, Caro. Paul Bassett. Paul Bassett and Robin Bishop, who's... Robin Bishop, these people are not to a lot of the listeners are not known. I mean, Paul Bassett was the founder of SEEK and the brother of the St Kilda president, Andrew Bassett. The brothers built this this, uh, mm. this And Robin Bishop, and Robin who Bishop was, was a senior figure at the Macquarie Bank. And, and who as recently as the gather round was saying to presidents they should back Richard Goida in getting Kylie Watson-Wheeler over the yep. line. So, you know, interestingly, um, Richard Goida di- didn't get his preferred candidate. Um, he, he got, because he was pushing for Kylie Watson-Wheeler. I think that's really interesting. And I think that it's really interesting that Andrew Dillon said, I think he said he wants a day grand final, doesn't he? I thought that was the impression I got. He gave a long answer of how many grand finals he'd been to and, and, he really and ultimately came year. back with, I really liked last year. Given that it was one of the worst grand finals in many years, <laughs> I think he liked a day grand final. I thought, it, I think, um, I've, I'm shattered for Brendan Gale and the way he and some of the other candidates have been treated, particularly Brendan Gale, because of the briefing against him that you know yeah. was articulated in the Herald yeah. Sun last week, but we've all known about for quite some time. I, I think that... Um, it's extraordinary that Andrew Dillon was Gillen's... He changed his succession plan several times and never had a really strong one, but he was Gillen's preferred candidate, I believe, mm. and yet it's taken over a year to appoint him. And I think it, there's been some really uncomfortable moments for Andrew Dillon. And I thought, I don't buy Richard Goiter's, I felt, pretty condescending defence of his own performance and the commission's performance, saying mm. the game's never been in better shape, and you know this is a comp. People don't understand the complexity of this organisation. He also, um, we asked, well, you, 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 you've been a couple of years now without replacing commissioners. You're, you're running too short on the commission, and had this sort of feeble reply that, oh well, I've been criticised before for having too many, and history would, you know, over our when history. When did we we've ever criticise the commission for being too big? No, and. We have criticised the fact that they don't. He pointed to history and what they've historically done. Well, historically, they've always had someone who played the game, 
on the commission. And he's now and saying he we're going to get a football oh, person. Go get, well, Why has it taken over two exactly. years? Well, it's just, it is, that, that's ridiculous. I, I don't look, he, he's not a strong media performer. He never has been. But this, and, that's not, a, making that appointment isn't about being a media performer. No. It's about operating effectively as a commission chairman and he hasn't. On the front foot as he was today, he, he his defence is that crowds are great, ratings are great. And I, I don't believe that this process hasn't hurt the organisation internally. I'm absolutely convinced that it has hurt it internally yeah. and that things have gone by the wayside. But, you know, in well, the they, end... Well, get out of it a bit because he's a popular figure in headquarters and more or less with the clubs, even though I think Brendan Gale was supported by the clubs the most. I think that's fair, Caro. Brendan uh, Gale was a club's choice. a lot of club's choice. And I think, the internal I think, AFL t- yeah. choice. Internal AFL choice was, was, Dylan. was Dylan. But I think Dylan's more popular with the clubs than Kylie Watson-Wheeler would have been all the other candidates. I think that's how I would say it. Yeah. Yes, and he yeah. talked about his executive. He, he thanked all his executive yep. teammates, Andrew Dillon. It, we, we think that Travis Old might leave and we'll probably, you know. Yeah. We, Grand, uh, Prix. Grand Prix. Sam yeah. McClure has linked him to the Grand Prix. Kylie Rogers, I'm certain, will stay. I don't think it's as much a snub to her. I think that, you know, she's newer into the organisation. She wasn't brought into the organisation to be the next CEO, which was one of the ideas about Travis Ald. So that it's going to be really interesting what happens with the executive team. And it seems like they're going to appoint a new GM of footy well before Gillan McLaughlin yeah. goes. Yeah, and I think that, that was the point of what they, the, the spin they put on it of, of Gillan staying on is basically he can keep the wheels ticking over with some of these things. And there is a transition period, but there's also Dylan can spend this time working out structurally how he wants it to, to look, make some of these appointments without being drawn into the day to day decision making. Well, um, he's already appointed it, Stephen but... Mead, which is um, not unexpected that he's the new general legal counsel. He's been basically acting in that position for some time. He's highly regarded. Um, the big, the other big one is a CFO because Travis Old's doing it at mm. the moment. Since Ray Gunston died, the AFL have been pretty bereft in that area, and you know we know how long the CBA is taking, and it should have been done. It was, it was a, a first order priority for Gillen and the Commission at the start of last season, and now we're another season in, and clubs I, are thinking it's months away. I, I think this CBA is actually going to be a really, I know, I know it's, it's for you know, it's a paid, not just a pay deal with the players. There's so many mm. of the rules are getting looked at. But I think it's, it's going to have a lot of, obviously, but anyway. Jake, you mentioned the line before of the big transition from, yeah, Uni Blues to Old Zavs. How heavily do they carry that burden of the the image of um, the boys' club? That it, this is this is the nexus of, of private school Melbourne, yep. private school football, or old boys' football. The oh, they carry it. They carry it heavily. And it's something that uh, they have to they have to address. Um, I, I've maintained. I mean, Rob Ald is in the in the AFL. The way that the AFL have treated state school football has been appalling. It's not been. I mean, and I, we all mix in that milieu of um, of the private school world. And I went to those institutions. Mm. So I'm well aware of the biases that are contained in that. Mm. That you know, if you're a kid from from the outer northern suburbs and, and you're going to a local high school, you have to get to a good club. Yeah. If you want to make it. And that's something that they should think about very carefully. I think that this onus on community footy, community footy will be, you know, we'll see that happen. I'm interested in the restructuring of the executive and what happens now to Brendan Gale. Does he stay at Richmond and just keep, you know, I mean, obviously it's a big job to run the Richmond Football Club. Got a few issues of their own right now. Well, they're a team at the crossroads, really. They've got to make some big decisions. I think Damien Hardwick... The three-time premiership we will, coach. We will come to them in the next segment. No, Sorry I'm just talking about the AFL yeah. administration because yeah. people keep saying to me, oh, Andrew Dillon will bring in Brendan Gale to run footy. I for just, ta- no, for Tasmania. Well, I've, I've, Tasmania. Also, I've also heard to run footy. And I, I would just be amazed if Brendan Gale came in Well, it would and depend on the, footy. It I mean, would depend on the brief, now, though, wouldn't it? I mean, if it's, if it's as we see it now, but if he came in, if he came in and said, right, you... you GM of footy, but you're also overseeing the Tasmania thing, and you're, you know this is a bigger, a more enhanced position. Then maybe, but I can't see it happening. It's been seen as favourite to run the AFL. I think it's a bit of a come down oh, to be given Tassie. I mean, Tassie's a big job, but and really, if they don't no, think what, what you, came, you're the right person what, for the senior job, why would they want you in? What, in what the if door? he, if I was in Gail's position, I would be saying to Dylan and implicitly the commission, 
if I'm guaranteed the, the the succession. Now he'll be older, so he's 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 about the same age as Andrew Dillon, so that's probably a little bit of a problem. But I would almost want a virtual guarantee. Oh, that's not going to happen, James. Well, no, no but it's, he's entitled to ask for that, isn't he? No, but. but I think I think Brendan Gale's got a lot of decisions to make, and I think he'll be feeling pretty shattered at the moment. I mean, people have been telling him for six months that he wasn't going to get the job, but the AFL Commission weren't telling him that. And I think it, it'll be just a, a tough few days for him. I think um, Travis Old, you feel, is probably known for the last week or two that it was going this way. But until it happens, you know, it, it doesn't... It, you don't really know well, that it's happened. He, he, he was told last week and that, he, that it yeah. wasn't him. And, and he knew four years ago that it was unlikely, given, I think, the relationship with Gill in particular. And But thought, well, you put your hat in the ring. And he had to go. And, look, his CV... It, <sighs> I also Very think, hard Jake, to pass. oh, no, it, it's ridiculous. But, you know, Andrew Dillon, yes, he's a safe pair of hands. Will he come in and change the culture? I doubt it, but I, I'm also a big admirer of his, and I think yeah. he's a very certain, thoughtful person. Yeah, I think it's it, he's a smart guy. It's a good appointment. But Jake, how close do you think Gillan McLaughlin came to actually staying? Because as recently yep. as two weeks ago, the commission was still hopeful. Yep, I, I, I think I think this was a lot more of a live possibility than then it's going to be admitted yeah and i think that that the fact that they've got this arrangement tells you where the chairman's and the commission's um position was is that they didn't want to they, they really struggled to let go of gillan mclaughlin charismatic leader um and uh but really I, i'm not sure that do, do i think i would just pose a question right now that i don't necessarily think he'll go through to the end of the year I, the, these handovers they often go, go a bit earlier the other, and that's a good question. The other question is Laura Kane, who has been such a strong performer since she came from North Melbourne to the mm. AFL. She's been given the interim role. I, I sort of thought she had that role anyway, by the way. But, she did. So what happens now? Well, she's been running it since at least October last year. If but not does she get the job? That, I think she will. Do but, you? It, but it depends I'm not on. So sure. Once they throw the field open, do you, do, you don't know who, who's going to going to apply. I think there's one candidate if he applied, and Caro, you. You would agree with me, I imagine, that Chris Davies, head of footy at the Port Adelaide Footy Club, is an outstanding candidate. If he puts his hand up for that job, I think they'd find it very hard not to give it to him. Yeah, I, I feel. I think there's is a that, few. Uh, I, I think there's a few Melbourne-based clubs that are looking for the services of Chris Davies as their next head of footy, and I, it's just whether he decides that he wants to work in an institution like the AFL. He seems pretty enamoured with Clubland to me. So I, I, my guess would be that's where he'll go. But you're right, it could be made difficult for him. Uh, as far as um, expectation, we, knew, we expected Andrew Dillon to be appointed after the, the announcement of the Tasmanian Stadium on the weekend. We expect the Tasmanian team to be announced this week. Would you exp- Wednesday? Is that yep. discussion around He's going, that? Yeah, Wednesday and... Sorry, Cara. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Gillan McLaughlin's going to Tasmania on Wednesday, and <laughs> they'll get the nineteenth license. Will it be twenty-seven or twenty-eight? People have seemed to be leaning towards twenty-eight. I hope it's twenty-seven. Bring him in, you know. And you people say, well, what, what's left for Andrew Dillon to do? Well, one big decision will be: are we a nineteen-team competition or a twenty-team competition? And if it moves to twenty, who is that team? Well, that was a question from one of our listeners, Brett, who said that. Uh, the only places with an adequate business case for a team are Canberra or a third WA team. I'm not sold on no. the idea of a 20th No, I don't team. want a 19th team. I, I, 20th. 20th, 20th team, sorry. I don't want a 20th team. Let me rephrase that. I, I don't I, mind a buy. I, I'm happy with a buy. I'd rather have a buy. I think they just you can't just keep expanding and expanding and expanding, and it diminishes every club's chances of winning a premiership. So that's something that never gets brought up. But um, some clubs have got... So a normal cycle ends up being 20 years. Well, that's asking a lot of people. Uh, also, I, we I, haven't bedded in the two, two expansion new teams. teams. Then we're going to a, an extra team in Tassie that's got to be bedded in, and you already want another one. No, it's too much. Yeah, and they're relying on the broadcast money, obviously, to you know, pay it, for everything. It, it, we it can't let this segment end though, without saying this is huge, the Tasmanian mm. announcement. Yeah. I mean, it, we've known now for some months it was probably going to happen, that it was going to happen. Once Gillan McLaughlin gets behind something, he usually gets the deal done and he's really, really failed in that area. He's he, he deserves a lot of credit for getting this over the line. I reckon he came relatively late to the picture, but once he was on board, he was truly on board. He's done a brilliant deal for the AFL. Can I just ask a quick one, a bit cultural? Richard Flanagan's column. 
was very yep. powerful and strong. Now, I'm not saying I agree with every part of it, but the the novelist has made the case uh, uh, that this is you know this is a scandal that the Albanese government's spending this money when there are homeless people in tents right next to that point. It was an interesting. I don't. I don't argument. I'm, it was a beautifully written piece. I love Richard Flanagan, but I don't agree with him. I I, I just believe that when these massive infrastructure deals come to a city, I, I think it 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 just th- there will be problems with it. But I, I don't think it only makes the city richer. It brings more people to the city, and it will hopefully solve a lot of those other issues. We interviewed the prime minister on Saturday. Wish I'd known he'd gone to Carl Sanderland's wedding when I spoke to him. <laughs> by the way, what a disgrace that was. Anyway, just digressing, and he, and as he said, I mean, the money will go to hospitals, it will go to housing, yeah. and and I believe that this will help put Tasmania well and truly back on the map. I'm not saying it was off the map, but it was certainly a very poor relation. I I just thought it was an unusual position for someone from the arts to take, like a, a novelist to take that position, because the arts is always the one that is is vulnerable to that exact same criticism whenever there's, you know, why are we spending money on the arts when people mm. are homeless and people are, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a common um, This complaint. is a wonderful thing for uh, We will we'll move on. But you, you are quite right to pull this up and say that is the, in the, in the historic context, the Tassie decision is far bigger than the, the, the AFL CEO. You're always going to have a CEO. This is a new team in the competition. So we'll take a break there and we'll look back at the weekend's games. Well, welcome back, Jake. Another week, another Collingwood come from behind win mm. at the death. Um, it's becoming a... Um, it's almost laughable now. It isn't is, it? isn't yeah. it? Well, look, they, they're fit, but it's really the belief. And in the last quarter, uh, the Crows went into their shell. There's two things going on. I think one is that Collingwood have a lot of belief and that the other team, in the case of uh, Adelaide this time, a- Essendon to a lesser degree, the previous game on Anzac Day, tend to be a bit inhibited. It's almost like they're, bel- they're seeing that this is going to happen. Um, they're a more experienced team than the Crows, and around the clearances, the clearances in the last quarter were 16-4. to four. That is a uh, yeah. demolition. The, the, the Crows should have killed this game The Crows should have killed the game earlier with accu- inaccuracy, and they didn't. And once it got to half time, and it was, what, I think 3-10 mm. to 3-4, you thought, oh, this is, this is so a many, dicey game so for, many... for the Crows, who, who've improved enormously. But at the end of the game, um, some of the older players, still side bottom, Jack Crisp's efforts around the contest were enormous, Jordan DeGoey, and of course Darcy Moore. And I think oh. Darcy Moore's efforts in this game and on Anzac Day, um, it's a big statement, but I mean, he's the most valuable player at Collingwood, clearly, in, ahead of Nick Dacos and Jordan DeGoey, yep. and even Scott Pendlebury. And he's one of the top 10 most valuable players in the game. He's a opinion. hero of the hour, isn't he? The, yep. the Anzac Day speech, yep. playing injured or sick, sick I sick, should say, I gather, yeah. against the Crows. You say it's laughable. I've never seen, I don't think it was laughable for Adelaide. <laughs> I've never seen no, a more shattered... Well, I saw it two days earlier, one day earlier mm-hmm. at, um, up at the SCG, but um, which was another one-point game, which was extraordinary. But no, Collingwood have just... So many people have said to me in recent days... I'm just going to start barracking for Collingwood. There's something, oh, something wrong watch. with that. There's something so, wrong with that. You might well, need to reflect on who you're having you, the meeting up with. I don't know anyone like that. <laughs> I do. I do. I mean, we know, and mm. you spoke about this on the podcast a few, oh, maybe a month ago, about the the new image of the Collingwood Football Club with mm. you know the prison bar decision with Port and you know the MCG deal, and and, and now we've had that amazing ceremony at Victoria Park. But they, it's, they've been it's, extraordinary. It's Collingwood Craig on McRae, and off the field, it, as much as anything. He's reshaped the image of them. He's the front man who's the most likable coach yep. there is because he yep. he's quick to smile and to laugh and to defer to his players and talk about happiness and love. But then he's just and got Darcy them, Moore and Darcy Moore and yep. Darcy Moore even like swearing in the um the the. Did you hear that, Carol? On ground interview, it, it was so Collingwood earthy and it yep. was good. And yeah. uh, no, it was you know, but I think that um, incredible. you know, that was a, you know, they had their rucks down. Flu went through the joint. Um, Pendlebury out. Mm. It come from behind. Still got. I think the thing that shouldn't be forgotten though is that when they've had the injuries, even though they've lost all these tall players, they've still got their gun players. Yeah. In uh, Moore, Degoe, uh, yeah. well, not Pendlebury this time, but Maynard. Dacos. Day cost times two. They've still got those guys out there, and and side bottoms playing a better better level of footy, Maynard. and a lot of footy results at the top end of the ladder. We'll get to Richmond in a minute, but seems to be how how long your veterans can keep going. If you look at the shape of the premiership, it's it's Scott Pendlebury and Steel Side Bottom. Steel Side Bottom's having a sort of Indian summer this year. It seems Trent Cochin's 
you know, pretty much hit the wall. Jack Rewald, I think, is playing really, really well. Dustin Martin seems to be sliding with injuries, etc. And then you look at Geelong, they've got Hawkins. Yeah. And Dangerfield rampant. So they now got look to be a team that can win the premiership again. I think a lot of well, current they, football patterns are based around the, how well your veterans are going. They do, and we'll come to them. But, I mean, I reckon Tom Hawkins, if you asked him two weeks in a row, you'll play on key backs that are... 20 kilos lighter than you. You play on Callum Mills one week and then, you know. Well, I mean, Collingwood and Essendon went in and they both had the short break. They both had really good players out. You know, they, they both seem like games that you probably wouldn't think they would win. Five-day break. And yeah. and yet Collingwood goes to Adelaide and plays an informed Crows and wins. Extraordinary. Mm-hmm. Extraordinary. Just an amazing result, I thought. Would not have picked that. And the counterpoint, the Tigers. Yeah, no, I, I really thought Richmond would be competitive this year. I've been really disappointed. They were so poor against the Gold Coast, a team who gets them again and again. You know, it's just extraordinary. Why is that? I don't know. I don't is it know. Some of the IP with Wayne Campbell and <laughs> Ray know, Cameron. Cameron up there. I don't know. Is there some Richmond? I mean, I, I think you're being a bit. I thought um, Trent Cochin's first half yeah. against Melbourne was actually really good um, a few I, days yeah. earlier. Yeah. I'm just. I'm probably that he's not the force. Like it, it's. To me, he's he can do it what one week in three. They've got a lot of soldiers down, yeah. but as I said, and Dion I, Prestia didn't play. Yeah, and and that was a big loss, and, oh, and obviously they're missing Lynch. Didn't play. Lynch and play. Yeah. Their, their backline's been decimated, and mm. Noah Bolt has had a you know not, not a great season so far. Look, I'm not saying it's Damien Hardwick, and he says we'll we'll regroup and we'll get together, and we're just not playing well. When we play our best, we can still be. I just wonder whether it's time to to change everything around a bit. Well, and I'm talking about the whole footy department. Sometimes it's just time for a change. Well, here's a question. I mean, if you're if you're are they in a position a bit like Hawthorne when, in about 2017? A lot of people have made these parallels. They brought in the two players trying to have another crack at it seemingly and it doesn't look like that's going to come off. Now, do they uh Clarkson hang around for that next few years and then they had this messy handover. Richmond Whatever they do, wouldn't they, Caro, want, Glees want clarity of of Damien Hardwick, first of all? Are you going forward yeah, to well, Damien Hardwick they, at the end of the year? There's or a not? question from Tom, one of our listeners, who says that the dynasty's over and do, do we think that Damien Hardwick should stay on and spend years in a rebuild or would the Tigers be better served with fresh eyes? And like, we're seven rounds in when we've decided that their best premiership coach since Tommy is should be thrown out. no. Well, it, it, no, but you got to have you got. It's how long you're Hawthorne. in a club, and yeah, I'm is. not saying he's going to make really poor decisions the way Alistair Clarkson did in his last few years, because I think Damien Hardwick is. Oh, I think Alistair really, and and there weren't peop, the right people guiding Alistair at the time, and he was led to run rampant for a couple of years, yeah. and it it really hurt that footy club. I, I think there are much stronger people running Richmond. But we don't know what Brendan Gale's going to do now. I don't think he'll do anything in the short term. Mm. But there is a new president. I just wonder about, you know, head of footy. Is it time to... No, I'm not I'm not saying... Well, they divide got, that job between Blair Hartley and yep. Tim Livingston. Yep. I'm, I just... I feel it's time for a change. I'm not, I'm not saying right this minute, but I think Richmond need to now start thinking beyond Damien Hardwick. And yes, he's been a wonderful... Coach and a wonderful leader of that. I don't see club. it as being down to Damien Hartwick. I think he's still. I don't think their game's wrong. I don't think he's getting less out of players. I just think that they've got some injuries and it's a list transition I do. period. I do. Uh, I disagree with that. He might. He might also relish the change, but um, for me, I like. I, I know we've touched is, on is, it every week. Yeah. The, is, the is, Hopper Taranto thing. I, I, mm. Those two guys are still young. It's and not their fault. They've been no, fine. They've been they've been, I mean, Taranto's been really good. I don't think the problem is though. You don't. It doesn't matter if Richmond drop down because they're not going to get early draft picks anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. no. But they the other be thing is having look, a crack. really. It's Dusty's not come back as the player that we thought he could get back to, and will he get back to that from here? I'm. I'm doubtful now. I was more confident at the start of the year that he could once fit um, and oh, not that you're over a period of mourning, but, you know, de- dealing with his dad, whether he was mentally back in the game, I thought he would get back uh, to a higher level than he's got to so we, far. Are we being a bit unfair to Gold Coast here? Like, oh, like, we are, but... Every time they lose, we, we they get bashed up and then they, they beat it, win a game in, in Melbourne, albeit Richmond are very injured. 
Yeah, but two weeks ago they lost to Fremantle. Like, they're not... Yeah, you know, I, I'm just... I, when they win... No, this is all about Richmond, Jake. I hate to be brutal. I still don't think Stewie Jews is a certainty to be there next year. No, I agree. I, and I don't doubtful. think that... I don't think... What are you... Very doubtful. Oh, I thought you were grimacing no, at me. No, no. No, I, I agree with you. And so I think he's in trouble, and I think this is about Richmond and the end of a dynasty. Yeah. And I think Dustin Martins reflects that in so many ways. He, he just doesn't seem to... Is it too late for them to do a sort of trading out of some senior players? Most of them are oh, thirty plus Jake, players. No, you don't. Who's going to take Dusty now? No, not Dusty. Some of the some of the players in the later twenties. Well, who? What a Liam Baker or something? Or well, I, I'm not. Jaden Short. No, I haven't Jake. gone through the list. No, yeah. no, I don't think that. I, I mean, may, maybe one, but no, I, I think that it is now time for. Some serious soul searching, led by John O'Rourke, the new chairman. He's not; a, he, he's a smart guy. He would have known this was coming. Well, welcome back. It was a weekend of big bags. Charlie Kerno, just a lazy nine. Uh, Tom Hawkins, eight more than he's ever kicked, yep. and one more than he's ever kicked in his in his career. And even last week, it was uh, uh, Charlie Cameron with um, was well, it small, small, yeah, small forward, small but you know, forward. bags of goals. Yeah, good to see and. Um, I enjoyed watching uh, watching those players kick those bags, and Charlie Kerno just what a magnificent. Well, it provided something to watch in that. To West watch, Coast it gave Carlton an interest game. to a terrible game. Oh, and did you wrote about this, uh, Michael? The, the the sad Saturday. Yeah. If you're the broadcaster, just goodness awful. me. The Dreadful, bottom three teams, it? one after the other. Oh, let's. There's That's a, a genius idea. Uh, debacle. Uh, well. Yeah, but the the Swans GWS was a pretty good game. Fantastic. That was mm. a it was a fabulous game, and um, I know I'm barracking for the story here, but it is intriguing to me that even though Tasmania is happening and all the other stuff, not one executive goes to the derby, one commissioner to the to the to the Sydney derby, the Sydney derby, and um, you know they 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 grant them two million dollars to spend money in New South Wales to market. And better organise the game and lift participation, and they've fixed you these clubs the way they do. I mean, it's mm. just you know after they've given the two million dollars, they put the grand final team up against Gold Coast away round one and Hawthorne Sunday lunchtime round two. They've really dropped. I mean, that is one area that Andrew Dillon can improve on his predecessor because football in New South Wales is is you know in a really really poor state. Yeah, and what what's I mean, you've written about this on the weekend last weekend, Caro. Do you, do you, what what measures do you think they they need? Well, I mean, GWS are the problem. Um, to get people to go, you've got to get people to go to their games. Do they play more games in Canberra? Um, do they SCG? Get, do they get? Well, well, there's one look at playing all their derbies against Sydney at the SCG. Won't go down too well with Dave Matthews and his team, but that could be one thing. Well, they won. They need they need better. They need to get more people playing the game. I mean, the AFL are putting in this um, expansion hub into Western Sydney with staff of seven or eight people, mainly in marketing and data, doing, you know, close deals with News Limited and um, the broadcasters to get more stories being told. But they've failed. I mean, for the CEO of GWS to say NRL stronger now than when we started and for the Sydney chairman to say footy's gone back in New South Wales, Sydney need to translate more supporters into members. And they need more grounds in New South Wales. But the AFL's struggled and they've really made no inroad at all, which is so disappointing. And Jake, on the field though, the Swans, the the biggest name, the biggest billboard they had for the game up mm-hmm. there is now one of their biggest problems. Yep. The, going, yep. the, well, the Lance problem. This. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it, it, uh, sadly, um, he's in a fantasy footy team of mine. And um, <laughs> so I'm sort of still hoping that Lance can, can perform. So it's personal for you. It's personal, but no. <laughs> played but, one year too long, hasn't he? Looks yep. like it, yeah. And... Um, they kick to him too much. I mean, this has been um, established now that when he's in the team, the players see the big fella and they, they look up and they kick to him. And that's a problem for the Swans. 14 and times. It, the next, 14 time, the times next most and, was Tom Papley and, and Logan McDonald for four each. Yeah. Um, but, and not getting a result from it. That's right. And then you look at what's happening. We, we started this discussion with Charlie Curnow and, um, yeah. and Tom Hawkins. They've got other players. So if you've got Jeremy Cameron in there, the, the opposition has this problem. Um, of covering both players and he, the deep player is usually the one with the mismatch mm. and in the case of the Carlton game I watched that and clearly you can only play Tom Barras on one of them and does that it's does that game I mean you can you can have the game where you fill your boots as they say and you yep. get you pick you, you kick your big bag of goals 
does it solve the Carlton problem? Because Kuno was never the goal kicking problem that they that they had. He's been playing well and kicking goals. Kick thirty. Um, it's been a McKay accuracy issue, a McKay accuracy issue, which is not really resolved and, now. Either. And peripheral players. Yeah, yeah. But no, it doesn't solve it. No, I don't think that. Um, I, I, that I don't put any credence at all into that win that Carlton achieved on the weekend. It means absolutely nothing to me. They've been so disappointing. They played a team which, quite frankly, were they in Victoria? You know, would be at their door every single Monday, asking, demanding to know what has happened. The West well, it Coast seems to be just a pretty long injury list, but they um oh still but no a lot of those injuries you've got to expect are going to come because they're old. They're old players that have been that have had a lot of injuries. Three years. Injuries, they, yeah. they are non-competitive. They are what you know. We thought you know. I put my hand up. Said Hawthorne was going to be. They've, they've been disgraceful, West Coast. And and honestly, Carlton get the uh, uh, love to see what Richmond managed to do against them this week. I mean, maybe Richmond. Well, I was think so Richmond bad. might get a bit of confidence out of that game. It, it was just dreadful, absolutely dreadful. And, and at the Co- moment, West do you think they'll finish up. last? Both of you, West Coast. Yep, indisputably. Although North have been pretty no. disappointing, but I don't think Hawthorne will. No. Nope, I agree. Depends if it's a fight for last or not, Jake. Yeah, it depends who wants to finish last sometimes. That's what I mean. Mm. Yeah. And, and and just before um, we finish up on that, the, the port, just Port Adelaide briefly. So, Fantastic. So, you know, since um, Ken Hinckley was untenable with the club, according to Warren Treadray, hasn't lost a game. <laughs> and some of those wins have been really great wins. I didn't think they'd beat St Kilda. Well, no one in the age did. We all picked, um, we yep. all picked St Kilda. But then um, I don't think anyone with enormous confidence, but... I was I'd completely forgotten Port's um, record at, the, though, at Marvel Stadium too, which has been pretty I good. I know, and, stupid. You know, but you feel as though Port, are, you know, Ken Hinckley, you know, might be going elsewhere at the end of the year. And Jake mentioned head of footy Chris Davies, and might he be going somewhere, coming to Melbourne next year? You feel as though the people there aren't exactly sort of well, they're invested, but are they invested beyond this year? It's an annual conversation and around yet, Ken, though. But isn't, isn't that it? because of the board? Isn't that yeah? Isn't that because David and, Koch, and he's in the last year of his yeah. contract? And and, you, and, you and they know, put it off till August, which is their yeah. And Gold Coast, to, you know, Gold Coast to might maybe looking for a new coach, and Ken's got connections there. But um, it's just extraordinary what they're doing and where this might end up. And I think it might end up where none of us saw it ending up. Well, they've got a, they've got some very talented players around the ball, and Jason Horn Francis, uh, who you wrote, who you met with, um, clearly a um, I saw shades of Caro of um, the way he played of Patrick Dangerfield. Just that he's got this explosiveness at a stoppage, and he can just accelerate away yeah. from players, even though he wasn't tidy with the ball all the time. But he and just according thought, to some people at the club, as competitive in nature as some um, Patrick Dangerfield's old teammate Joel Selwood. That, that's a really interesting question from Henry um, Gleese. Hi guys, why isn't anyone countering the hype around St Kilda and their apparent turnaround under Ross Lyon? Pointing out, and this was written last week before yeah. they lost to um, Port. This time last year, there were five wins and one loss after round six. To be fair, Henry, we've brought this up virtually every week. I mean, they were eight and three under Brett Ratton last year. At, I think after the injuries have, have meant. Yeah, they'd started without King and Steele was out for a few weeks, and they won games without those two guys. And others. And, and yeah. others, and Membry. So that they, I think it's more than what he's done with the injuries rather than what he's done, because I don't think anyone rates and killed his playing list that highly. They've got some. Better young players mm. than people appreciated, including mm. Owens and um, uh, oh, Philippou. Philippou, yeah. yeah, yeah. The other team I reckon that deserves sort of strange credit is Essendon out of that game against Geelong. They came off a five day break. They got no tall backs, mm. and they're playing against the, and they the, won the two second best. Half, and they didn't won the they? second. They kicked sixteen goals. They were the agent of their own demise as far as some just stupid turnovers that gifted goals. And do you think they... I mean, I know the game was sort of set by that first burst in the first quarter. You didn't expect them to come back into it to win the game. But they fought that out and they looked like they actually had something. And you think, you throw right back in there. They are one key forward, you know, and hopefully, I wrote about it, but hopefully it is as Zach Reid comes through. But I I actually thought they played well. Five-day break, coming up against Geelong and you're, you're playing an undersized defence against that, that pairing. I don't know why you thought... Yeah, I thought that, I, th- I think Essendon have been good in every game to mm. a degree. I don't know. Will they make the finals? I'm not sure. Don't think so. Probably they're going to be on the margins of it. Uh, I think there's you know four teams that are that are clear cut. Uh, you know, and obviously Brisbane's one of those, and 
Collingwood's one of those. Melbourne and, and Geelong, they're all going to... They're the, probably the favourites for the top four. Port Adelaide is a wild card. And well, the Bulldogs are sitting outside the eight at the moment. I, I'd probably put them in. Um, but you look at the eight as it stands, who goes out for them? Maybe Adelaide. Um, you know, it's been a big jump to get into the eight, and they're playing some good footy. Um, should have won, yes, on, on Sunday. Probably should have won the week before. And, you know, you think, well... But other than that, you know, someone's going to have to be shaken out of there for if the Bulldogs are to make it. And they're the, to me, they're, they're probably the most likely. I mean, you've still got, you know, theoretically, you've got GWS and Gold Coast both sitting there at three and four. Now, I don't see either of those getting up into the eight, but they're, they're thereabouts. Are they better than Essendon's play? Better the Bulldogs place should make the eight on talent. Yes. So whether they do or not, that's, they should. Yeah. Um, of the struggling teams at the bottom of the ladder, Frio, North, Richmond, Hawthorne and West Coast, which is in the worst position? <laughs> or put, put differently, who would you rather be? Well, the only thing that we always give West Coast is that they're a very wealthy club. And you feel that at some point they'll turn it around. Although, will it be under Adam Simpson? I don't think so. No, Fremantle for mine. I mean, obviously North have, you know, floundered... Um, floundered really badly yeah. since um, Alistair Clarkson's very dynamic debut a few weeks ago, two, a month, few mon- two months ago, seven weeks ago. But Fremantle have been so disappointing. Yeah, yeah. Gee, they've been disappointing. Given oh, that's the recruit, the recruiting, and to be performing the way they are. No, they're. they're if you talk about argue. West Coast, we'd be queuing up outside West Coast. I think we'd be queuing up outside Fremantle's doors as well if we were in. There's an editorial. The West Australians run an editorial about the state of the WA teams. Like the the, the actual, they've made it. Like well, it's a, Monday. So I'm yeah, sure but no, 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 no. I mean an editorial from the paper. So yeah, it's sort of yeah. thundering about the, uh, no, the lack meaning, of... I'm sure they're doing yeah. that as a weekly thing at the moment. Well, Fremantle's the best placed in the after this year, I would say, on their list. And Andrew Brayshaw has clearly um, you know, been not right. And not performing at the level he was last year. Oh, Will they West ever Coast win go... a flag? I mean, it's now, well, now we've got. You talked about you know more teams coming in and making it less likely. Where does the next premiership come for Fremantle? The, the first premiership. I, I think Fremantle still long term and reasonable. Nick, I think they've made some poor list management calls that have exacerbated some issues. But I think they'll recover well from this season. Oh, and I think West Coast go backwards before they go forwards from here. I know we're looking at them and talking about them as being a possible bottom team, but I look at the the, the age profile of their list. I don't see them getting better as quickly as some of these other teams. Mm. Um, I think Hawthorne have got a clear direction. Whether you support it or not, yep. Hawthorne at oh, least know what they're very doing. Clear what at least they know what they're doing. What they're doing. And, and North have you know, tried to do to do likewise, but um, North got more mature players. Yeah, and Jake, you wrote about an, a bid from clubs to have uh, extend the the initial contract period for top twenty draft picks. The to, AFL, the AFL to four years, three years, three years. All right, maybe you should tell tell us what your story was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, three year guaranteed contracts. Yeah, they they put that to the players, and the players um, have not ruled it out. Haven't said no, but they they've got concerns about player restri- restrictions on player movement. Okay, so oh, now we know the that bit. Were, the players can't agree to that. No, but they haven't. Why said Why should no the yet. best twenty players be the most restricted players in the competition? Yeah, and there's also a problem of the of the day cost. Sam Walsh type player, Chris Ashcroft, day, Ashcroft. These gun young players who could get seven eight hundred. I mean, what can Nick Dacos get next year? You know, he's, he's being a paid a lot as it is on the contract he signed, but he could get even more. All right, now we'll circle back to the quick question part of it. Should they do it or not? No. Caro? No. All right, done. That is all we have time for for this uh, historic episode on a day of, uh, of the appointment of the CEO and the imminent announcement of a Tasmanian team. Uh, thanks to both of you for joining us. Thanks also to Channel 7 and Fox Footy for the audio we've used in this episode. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can do so via email, realfootypod at theage.com.au. Don't forget to subscribe, rate and review wherever you get your podcasts. And join us on Friday for the round eight edition of our Expert Tips podcast. Thanks for listening and we'll catch you then.